Acreditamos na aprendizagem livre. Livre de donos e livre de qualquer um nos dizendo que é hora de aprender. Aprendemos o tempo todo e em todo lugar. Somos Life Wide Learners. Queremos criar nossa própria definição do que é aprendizado. Porque só nós sabemos quando aprendemos ou não. Queremos trocar controle por confiança e coragem. Queremos poder fazer escolhas, criar nossas próprias aventuras e aprender a cada viagem. Sabemos definir o que, como e por que aprender. Queremos um mundo sem lista de presença, até porque a verdadeira presença não se mede de fora para dentro. Queremos redes abertas, de computadores e de pessoas. Não acreditamos que seja possível obrigar alguém a aprender. Queremos ser convidados e queremos poder convidar também. Mais do que estímulos, queremos autonomia. Poder parar um pouquinho no meio do dia para ler, pensar e conversar. E tudo isso sem sentir culpa. Queremos que a vontade de mudar e crescer seja o principal indicador de sucesso de iniciativas de aprendizagem. Queremos tudo isso por saber que vamos aprender a vida toda. E para isso ser verdade, temos que aprender em todos os momentos e espaços da vida. Life Long Learners. Somos Life Wide Learners. Muito bem, boa noite para todos e para todas que estão presentes aqui e que estarão vendo esse vídeo. Hoje a gente vai ter um encontro com um cara que eu admiro muito, o Donald Taylor. Ele faz uma pesquisa todo ano sobre o sentimento global das ações de treinamento e desenvolvimento e ele vai dividir o resultado, especificamente o resultado do Brasil hoje. A gente resolveu, a gente ia gravar um vídeo, a gente resolveu fazer isso live, é, porque a gente consegue, no fundo, fazer edição do vídeo melhor ainda aqui. Então, para você que está vendo depois, o cuidado que a gente está tendo aqui é muito é, pensando nisso. E... A gente vai também é, fazer essa entrevista hoje, vai ser toda em inglês. Então, no ao vivo tem inglês, quem estiver vendo o vídeo já vai estar com a legenda logo na sequência, é, porque a gente achou que ficava mais dinâmico é, dessa vez, dessa forma, sim. Quem quiser colocar pergunta, manda no, no, no bate-papo do, do YouTube, a gente pega as perguntas, a gente já tem alguma coisa, mas basicamente vai ter uma apresentação super bacana. É legal que o Donald também, ele é o organizador do Learning Technologies, que é um evento maravilhoso, acontece em maio agora, a gente está indo com uma delegaçãozinha para lá, é, e vai trazer um monte de informação nova. Donald também teve presente aqui é, no nosso Contra to Culture do ano passado, e foi um super sucesso. Ele fez a pesquisa, a gente soltou no LinkedIn, no Instagram, outras empresas soltaram também, e a gente teve é, um resultado bom, e vai ver o resultado, hoje a essência do que, que aconteceu. Então, com vocês, Donald Taylor. Good evening. I understood about 5% of that, Conrado, but uh, I... Which is I, your name? My name, and uh, Learning Technologies is a marvelous conference, which was great to hear. <laughs> um, so apologies for not speaking better, better Portuguese. Uh, I will try to speak my English as well as I can. There we are. Great. Good to be here. Good to be here. Good to have you in Europe. You're in Portugal at the moment. Yes, I'm Portugal. I'm Portugal. Yeah, and I just saw that Liverpool won. Oh, oh, do you have a team in England though? Yeah, Arsenal. We lost last night. I was really annoyed. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, my team lost also. Oh, so right. uh, we're going to do something that we uh, we are doing in all our transmissions and videos, which I'm going to describe myself just for the people that that sure. can see, so that they can understand. So. And I'm going, I'm going in Portuguese. Então, eu vou fazendo minha autodescrição. Eu sou, eu sou um cara é, um branco, de, eu sou um homem, tenho barbas, um homem cis, tenho barba e cabelo grisalho, uso um óculos e estou com uma camisa azul e meu fundo desfocado. So I just talk about my, 
the way I look. So if you want to do the same, and then you can just present after that. Okay, so I'm Don Taylor. I am not as handsome as Conrado, but I am a um, <laughs> tall guy, about six foot one, uh, 186 centimeters. Brown hair, no beard, blue eyes, wearing glasses, and not quite as much hair as I used to have. And it's going gray on the edges. That's me. Great. So let, let me, before I start, we haven't, we haven't, that's not the way we are going, we said you're going to be, but I have one question that why, why you do this research? Why is this research important? And because well, you do every year, right? Yeah, I do it every year. It's the ninth year of doing it. And I'm just really interested in not, necessarily what people are talking about now, although I, I am interested in that. But what I'm interested in is how do ideas spread? What, why do we get excited about something? And then of those ideas we're excited about now, in three, four years' time, how do those ideas then, or some of them, become mainstream? And what changes? Because it's very rare that an idea goes from being an idea that everyone's excited about to then being the same idea that everyone uses usually usually there's a change on the way and i'm interested in that so really that's my my background to that is that i'm interested in that process and i use the global sentiment survey to look at it and of course i'm interested in what people are talking about in learning and development and it's also a really good way of having conversations with people all over the world about what they're doing so uh, this week i've had conversations with people from sweden from ireland from the Netherlands, uh, one group of people all over the US, um, uh, all about the topic of what they're doing now, what their challenges are and how they're tackling them. And for me, that's always exciting. Very good. So let's see the presentation and okay. we're going to talk together about it. When yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you some questions as we go through this, because I don't want you to fall asleep if you're jet lagged or something uh, in, in Portugal. I want to keep you awake. So listen, I've been doing it for eight years. I want to say thank you to the sponsors and to the media partners. And of course, also to Novi, which is not on here, but which is a, effectively, it's a new category, which I'm going to have next year, which is a, a country partner, a country partner for Brazil. And did a great job getting people in. Um, I, this is the same question I ask every year. What will be hot in workplace learning and development? And people have a list of 15 things they choose. Um, three things from that list of 15. And this year we had over three and a half thousand people from 100 countries. You can see there the seven regions and very pleased this year to get Africa on board. We had 12% of the votes coming from Africa. Uh, and Monica is, is saying in the chat, it's really interesting to compare the actual uh, versus the previous trends. I, I totally agree. And having done it for nine years, Monica, it's very interesting to see which things really became real and which things were just talked about and disappeared and nobody ever saw them again. Okay, so we had 15, there are, there are 15 key countries which were 20, more than 2.5% of the vote. Brazil, look at that, is our fourth country. Although just before the school, Conrad, I was talking with my friend in New Zealand, she was really annoyed, really annoyed that they were pushed into fifth place by one vote by Brazil. So it, it's not gonna be easy for Brazil I next love year. It. <laughs> They're so competitive, the, the New Zealanders. Um, look, we've been talking about this, and I'm sorry, the, the, the formatting of the slides has been changed slightly by the, by the app, but we'll get the, if you want the slides, I'll make sure they're available for you from Novi, um, so you can see them all. Um, the point is, I ask people to contribute. I, it's a very short survey, three questions, only one obligatory question. I get lots of people responding. They're not all over this graph. They are from the innovator and the early adopter side. So these are people who are excited by new ideas. They use technology, they use new methodologies, and they want to talk about it. And as I said, Conrad, what I'm interested in is, all right, what's going to become actually adopted a bit down the line? It, it, not everything will be, but everything that is adopted at some point in the past these innovators thought it was interesting. So we have to go and look at what people are talking about now to understand what's going to change in the future. 
here's the list of, of 15 things that I give to people. I'm, I won't dwell on this because I want to get through to the Brazilian results and, and discuss those. But there are 15 things plus other that we ask people to uh, vote on. They can choose three of these. Skills-based talent management is a new one this year. Um, so here's the table of results. I'm just going to have a sip of water because people might want to have a look at that. Um, I'm not sure how easy it is to read. I think it's it's doable. Yeah. Okay. The key thing is at the top is reskilling, upskilling. That's number one. And just to be clear, what reskilling and upskilling means, if you've got a job and you go to a new job that's that's different, you need new skills for it. That's reskilling. If you get new skills for your current job or perhaps for a future job, then that's upskilling. So there's always lots of different nations about this, but I think that's pretty straightforward. That's what it is. I had the conversation this morning with the people from, from the Netherlands about this. They were saying that, Donald, is this people just jumping on a buzzword or is it actually happening? And the answer is it's both. Uh, it, reskilling upskilling has been a buzzword since January 2020 when the World Economic Forum released its um, report upskilling for uh, uh, the upskilling revolution. Uh, that was a crucial moment. Um, so it's a buzzword, but it also reflects what people are doing. I know lots of people who are going through programs where they are training people to do new jobs differently. So why don't we just call it training? Well, the answer is because if it was just us talking about it, we'd call it training. But it's got the attention of strategists, certainly big consultancies, and these people want to give it a name that sounds important, and they want to sell it into uh, higher ups in organizations. The strategic people, the executives, they want to call it reskilling and upskilling. So it is training, but it is also new stuff because it's new ways of doing it in, in quite big ways and also i think this is the the key thing reskilling and upskilling is helping people adjust to a new world um davies raised the question about learning communities and communities of practice aren't trends um i'm not sure if that's a question i don't have them on the list what we have on i have to choose 15 things that i think are covering what's new um, for me, that would probably be covered by communal learning, communal slash social learning. It's not the same thing, but it's close enough. So th that's a question. Yeah. You Go define the, the, the categories, right? Yeah. Uh, and basically, you base yourself on last year's and you see if there's anything new. This I, 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 almost... I look at last year's. I take off one. I put a new one on. Um, and I, I, I spent a lot of time uh, over the year browsing Twitter, LinkedIn, listening to people. It's my job, after all, what's going on. And I have a list of options, maybe five or six things that I could put on. And I choose one of them. It's quite difficult. So this year, it was something, a, a phrase, talent, skills-based talent management, um, which is trying to talk about some of the new stuff that's going on in that field. Um, I don't always no, get it right. No metaverse? Well, it was that it was that all metaverse, Conrado. It was that all metaverse. Uh, I'm going to put metaverse on this year, almost certainly. But what do <laughs> I take off? <coughs> Here's a question. Right. Here's the table. Look at the table. The bottom one is curation. Yeah. Virtual uh, reality. Uh, well, I could take off virtual reality. Actually, I might do. I could take off mobile delivery. Right. But I think, OK, here's the problem. Mobile delivery is low on this table, but it's very big in Africa. Curation okay. is low on this table, but it's big in Brazil. I, you know, I don't want the Brazilians to feel I'm taking something away from them. Virtual and augmented reality, I want to see what happens. Is it going to go down or is it going to bounce back up again? It, it's, I don't know. Right. So um, I'm going to wrestle with this one all year and then come <laughs> November, I'll make my decision. But almost certainly Metaverse is the one that's going to go on because that's what everyone's talking about. Reskilling upskilling is number one on this list at the moment, but it is not number one for everybody. So it's not number one in every in every group that people work. So in education, I ask people, where do you work? In workplace training, it's number one. In for vendors, for freelancers, it's number one. 
But in education, it's not number one. And it's not number one in every geography either. In Brazil or in South America, actually, reskilling, upskilling is not the first choice. It's the second choice. Um, and I want to have a quick look at, uh, at what that looks like. So here are is the top three options. Um, uh, the I'll just jump back a slide, actually. The, the, the top three options, you can see here that the second and third options are, are separated by one and a half percent. Number two is collaborative learning, and number three is, is personalized learning, all right? But that one and a half percent is one and a half percent of three and a half thousand people internationally, right? So it's a huge, it's a huge group of people, and the gap is different according to where you are. So here are the top three options. Um, you could say that in South America, for example, we've got a much bigger gap than one and a half percent is 7.3 percent that's driven by brazil in south america collaboration is much much more important than personalization and look at the left hand side the same is true for africa but look in the middle whereas in south america collaboration is much more important than personalization in north america and in india personalization is more important than collaboration and it's been like that in north america since 2017 so it's it's a it's an entirely predictable trend. I just want to have a quick look at some other things that that make this point about how things are different across regions. You've got Europe, UK, North America, Africa here. These are the four regions that make up seventy two percent of the vote. Um, on reskilling, the number one, they're all agreed. That's really important. But as we've just seen, North America puts personalization above of collaboration and Africa puts collaboration above personalization. And then if you look at the African vote, you could say, right, well, they, they, they vote more for coaching and mentoring and less for learning analytics, less for micro learning. All right. So does that mean that there's less technology in Africa? No, because if we look at the bottom half of the table, they by far and away lead the vote across the regions for artificial intelligence virtual reality and mobile delivery now mobile delivery we know is big in africa because of the issues with infrastructure but virtual and augmented reality that is super hot in nigeria why i have no idea it maybe they've just got a, they've got a lot of people working out in lagos i don't know um i just want to quickly look at also how each country can be different as well as the regions here are some countries there are the, the 15 top countries that we looked at uh, earlier each one of these will have will one of them will have voted more for the options than anybody else. Sometimes it's predictable. So South Africa, mobile delivery makes sense. Big country, they need to get uh, the mobile delivery in place because they haven't got the infrastructure. In the Netherlands, performance support is very big because there's a chap in the Netherlands, Alfred Remitz, who's been working on performance support making it a big thing there for the past 20 years. Fine. So that's another reason. It's different from South Africa, which is geography. This is a personality. In Sweden, reskilling and upskilling is huge. 17% vote for it this year. But in the past, Sweden has always voted first for collaboration. So why is it voted this year for reskilling and upskilling? The reason is that three months before the survey came out, Per Lager wrote a book called Upskill and Reskill in Swedish, and that got everybody thinking and talking about it. So there are lots of reasons why votes can change internationally. I think the, the key thing for me here is just that location matters when we're talking about this stuff. It's never, it's never simple. There's always a good reason, or there's always a reason why things may change. Conrad, should we jump forward to, to, look, at the, um, to look at the Brazilian stuff? Let me ask you something before. Please do. What's, show, what's showing value? Okay. Now, this is an issue, right? For me, showing value is a really big option. It's very important. It's about the learning and development function showing that it's creating value for the rest of the organization. But you speak very good English, right? I haven't done the analysis yet, but I'm going to between now and the next survey to look at how whether people's first language being English affects certain choices. So showing value for me means that. 
consulting more deeply with the business for me means you go out and you speak to people and you try to understand what the issues are with the business and as a result of that you do something and then you show value so you, at the end of it right people talk about impact people talk about roi yeah or return on investment showing value is my way of trying to cover all that now i don't yeah. give people definitions when i put the survey out there the reason being that i think it gives a full sense of security i think a lot of people will answer this survey without reading the definitions uh -huh. so i don't want to persuade myself that they are thinking the same as me but it might make a difference to how people speak how people vote i don't know yeah impact i think it 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 would be in portuguese a better least. word yeah it See, should be a better word yeah so that's the problem once i put the word down i can't change it because i can't yeah, compare yeah of course you can't compare year. that's the problem so very good. So let's see what what happened over here. What and happened in Brazil? You... Yeah. Okay. So focus on Brazil. 164 votes. Thank you very much for making that possible, Conrado, and all the team at Novi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I have to say, we have you have other companies uh, that yep. by themselves they decide to help you and us. So I extend this help to everyone that has shared the post or even. Created. Thank you to the Brazilian uh, learning community. There we go. Great. Um, so the whole survey, uh, the boxes haven't quite come out here, I don't know why, but the whole survey was mostly learning and development people, 43%, that was the biggest group. It's about the same in Brazil, and consultants and freelancers, 24%, 16% worldwide. It's not much of a difference. So I think, I think if we see changes in Brazil to what's happening with the whole survey, it's probably because of what's happening in Brazil, not because one group is more represented than another. Uh-huh. All right, here's Brazil against the rest of the world. Um, where Brazil has a bigger vote than the rest of the world is collaborative learning, which was the same as last year. Um, and I, Conrado, I'm always very wary about trying to produce some sort of um, easy cultural solution to this problem about why people vote differently, because I think it's quite a complicated thing. But last year, collaboration was strong in Brazil. This year, it's strong. And reskilling, upskilling, which is so popular everywhere else, is number three in Brazil. Do you have any sense yourself as to why those top three are so different in Brazil to everywhere else? Regarding collaboration, social learning, uh, I think that we have 70, 20, 10 here as a mantra for a lot of companies. Even though they most of them don't know what to do with seventy twenty, <laughs> but they like the concept and then they, they I'm, I'm saying because they say this themselves right I like it's like hope's not a strategy <laughs> and but we are regarding country we are uh, we believe in social learning meaning the the learning together so I think that well, usually in our in our uh, uh, consulting projects when we ask how do you learn. Mm. Actually, the question is, do you learn every day? And usually they say yes. In the, in the company, they say yes. How? That's interesting. How? They say I learn by uh, talking to others. By So this could be. And rescaling, upscaling, I, I think could be, could be a language issue, but I don't yeah. think it is. It's, it's I, number I, one everywhere. It's number one everywhere else. I don't think that's a language issue. I, I, yeah, I don't I think, think so. so. The thing is, LXP. Uh, uh, it's a thing. It's an investment. It's a huge um, effort from the L and D team to approve yeah. and to implement. And we have a very, very problematic LMS. I was going to use a bad word. This problematic. Uh, LMS uh, all around. We have, we are a huge country. When I have we, when we have companies that, I mean, they are all over the country. We yep. need to have a structure initiative. So and somehow I would say that LXP it's a buzzword over here. Is it how recently has it become a buzzword? Because in the rest of the survey, LXP peaked two or three years ago and it started to make its way down which is why it's number eight for the rest of the world. So I'm just wondering, is it only now being promoted in Brazil? Uh, no, I mean, it, we, we've, the grid is here, uh, 
have been installed here, have been starting to be installed here in local companies four years ago. Right. But about so, was, yeah, but they start to be, I mean, we start talking about it. So probably it has peaked a little bit last year, probably you or the year before. But for me, for me, it's interesting uh, to have learning experience platform as this number two topic. So specifically, if you think about the, the, the population of the research, I mean, one fourth is 24% of consultants. Hmm. This is interesting. And this looks like company are going to invest in this kind of thing. Okay, so the final question for me is curation, right? Now, I was talking to the Dutch this morning. You know, they all speak great English. When I was talking about it, they had to explain to each other what curation was, right? Because it's not even really a word in English. It's kind of a made-up word. Um, so is know. there an issue? So, so why is it so widely popular in Brazil? I think because it's popular, because a lot of people say about it, Mari, my 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 partner, she uh, she works a lot of or she 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 studies a lot curation, and we have some, some people inside Novi. So it's a thing here, right. mostly because we have a lot of content because of fake news, because of uh, how to how to navigate the excess of of content, good and bad. But somehow it's something that it's important. Curation could be the other size. The other side, uh, sorry, for personalized learning, meaning yeah. that if you curate, yeah. so this could be something. No, uh, uh, somehow I, they, I, they I, are. I think that's definitely the case. I think they're definitely related. So it may be actually personalization has got a quite a low score because curation has got a high score. Yeah, could be but something you know, you... like that. If you let me see, even even if you add curation plus personalization, on the word is ten point eight, and you should do the same in Brazil. Personalization, that is. It could be 12.3. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's similar. But I think that creation is important. And and specifically uh, in Brazil, I would say, uh, just a guess, but 80% or 90% of the, of the learners inside the company, they speak Portuguese only. And they don't have a lot of good content. If you go in English, you have a lot of good content and a lot of content. So probably mm -hmm. to find the good content is something important. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's interesting. Uh, David is just uh, putting here. Vale, it's a huge company. It's a mining company, one of the largest in the world. Mm -hmm. And they have inside their learning narrative or their actually it's their vision. A their motto is learning together, which is a, a social learning assertion that's very clear. So probably might be going back to collaborative social learning might be something regarding to our our culture about that is really interesting and... because that is not something which I've heard seriously suggested elsewhere uh, and for a large mining company this is not some wishy washy company this is a, a, a really physical company to have that motto I think it's very interesting so. I probably there's a cultural, a strong cultural element to this. And look, Conrado, you've really made life difficult for me with curation here because I wanted to take it off. And I don't feel I can do that because it's so important. It's number eight on the table. If I pull that off, all the Brazilians will feel insulted. So I think I might have to take off virtual reality next year. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah. The thing is that um, I, somehow I think that Brazil part of the Brazil, I don't know the group here, right, that, which is a good thing. But we like we like trends and to follow trends and to see fashions that are uh, come and go. It's interesting that even though virtual reality and augmented reality it's down on the list of both, mm -hmm. they are presenting every learning yep. convention poster with the example of a trend. And it's just well, not there, right? Yeah, it, be, bear in mind, bear in mind, virtual and augmented reality, but especially virtual reality, um, was super, super hot four years ago. Since then, a lot of things have changed. I think it's now becoming much more business as usual. So in a way, it is becoming a trend. I'm seeing it being used for soft skills training and, of course, for all the physical training that you want. 
I don't think we're there yet. I think it'll be next year or the year after that it really starts to go mainstream. But actually, that's one of the ones which I think is not for everything. It's not like mobile delivery. But that's one of the things that I think is going mainstream because it is a a way of doing things better. Not everything, but some things better. So, uh, yeah, it's not hot. It's not new. But I think it's finally arriving. Uh, look, these are the ones where Brazil is lower than the rest of the world. Uh, this is what I don't get, right? If collaboration and social learning is so high, why is coaching and mentoring so low? I'm sorry, I'm I'm beating you up here. You've, you're yeah, you're I, sitting. You're I was sitting... just thinking, should be the other way around. I was just thinking about yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Ah, uh, you know, about, I think we have. I don't. I don't know if it's happening in England or in the US or in other parts of the world. But coaching here, it's not on a good position. Yeah. Meaning that you have the life coach and the health coach and the whatever coach. So it was we 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 have an expression here is that we have I have to try to, to gourmetize. It's a gourmet word. It's just, you know, you add some extra powder and it's a fancy word to say something. And a lot of people and you have this issue with uh, uh, coaches that th actually that there's a there's a very interesting profile on Instagram, which is called coaches not even people. So that's the way the way this yeah. I think interestingly, I think there's the same skepticism in the Netherlands, which is a completely different country from Brazil. Obviously, small, densely populated, and several thousand kilometers away. But they said when I was talking to them this morning, they said, "You know what? There was somebody on television last night. It was so funny. He was talking about how in the Netherlands, everybody's a coach. There were just so many of them. Yeah, and the you do it. You do a three day course, and before lunchtime on the second day, you have to set up your company and get your first client because everyone's out there trying to get business. And they all recognise this is a real problem. So there's a lot of cynicism about it. I think. Yeah, I think that, that this might be." Even I still think that for for part of the group, uh, either coaching and mentor, I think it's an interesting approach. Showing value could be a language issue. Yeah. Uh, like, like um, yeah, I think that the most in Portuguese would be demonstrar valor. This, this, I think for part of the group, it will be difficult even to compare to the other, to right. the other right. items. And mobile delivery, I have because it's not good in both of the lists, but I have a a perception that it's just delivery. You don't say I'm going sure. to do a, yeah. Yeah. a a mobile call. You're just I'm going to do a call. So it might be that I, actually this is the one you should take it off the list. That's but look, I should November. of course I should do. I should do because it's the bottom of everybody's list apart from <laughs> Africa. Ah, where said, mobile yeah, delivery yeah, yeah. is super important. I can't do that. And if I if yeah, I go to if right. I go to Asia and they're using it. I can't take it off. Yeah, it's no, it's great. Yeah, it's a difficult. But, but, I, but I would say yeah. that I mean I don't plan to mobile deliver because everything is mobile first. No, it's, and whatever. It, so... it, you know when when I started this list in 2014, that was number one. Now it's right at the bottom. So I, it's going to have to come off at some point. By the way, Monica was saying I see there's a connection between the learning experience platforms and curation. I completely agree with Monica on that one. I think it's a really yeah. it's a really good point that. Um, these things are interconnected and very often you might find yourself thinking, well, which one actually do I want to vote for? And that might cause problems actually in the voting. Um, okay, so those three, by the way, the blue ones are all the highest of the 15 countries, the 15 key countries. Mm -hmm. And mobile delivery was the lowest uh, of, of all the 15 key countries. Just want, I wanted to check, looking at the past... Were some of these things just a blip? Was it a one-off? Um, I think the reskilling, upskilling—you know—it's—it's—it's—it's it's, it's, it's higher this year, but it's in the same position relatively. LXPs, the top three are the same, top four are the same, which is very interesting. So that shows, yeah, it's consistent. I don't understand micro learning, but that, you know, it's gone up. It's gone up three positions, but it's only one percent. So I'm not saying that's a big difference this year. Um, and the two ones that have come down this year are curation and mobile delivery. Even though curation is super popular, it was even more popular last year. Yeah. Mobile delivery, uh, I think, yeah, like you say, it's it's not seen as being something that's terribly important. 
Um, I, I'd like to just compare Brazil, USA, world, and Spain quickly. Uh, I, I Why chose. Spain? Well, I want to choose a, a country which was um, not in Northern Europe, and Spain is the country in in Southern Europe which I had the I had the most votes in. So it was a. a I know. I know you're not a his. A Spanish-speaking yeah. country. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's not the reason. It's just I wanted to have a, it's a, a country that was as close as possible that I could find. Yeah, that's, um, it's, so that's uh, why. Uh, um, ideally, you, you might want to put India on here as well as a large, very populous country. But it, there are so many differences I, that doesn't make sense. Um, what's really interesting is just how very different the countries are. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I, I chose these as a way of comparing to compare, and then looked at the results. And I, I didn't realize that Brazil was so different from the rest of the world on reskilling and upskilling. We'll have a look at these other ones here. Uh, and this is the order that they are on the the, the, the global table. Sorry, Conrado, are you going to say something? Let, let, yeah, let me ask you something. Yeah. The, the last year, it was, it was the same. You were somehow shocked, shocked that uh, how come reskilling and upskilling is not... And, and, and I agree with you. I think it's strange because we're talking... But do you think somehow this could be related to a lack of perception of the transformation that is coming on and the way that learning could be helping them in a more structured way. Like, that's, because really, it, it, that's really well expressed. Yes, I agree. Or, or it's that, but with a twist on it. It's not that people don't understand it. It's just that they haven't been told that this is happening. And we have to ask ourselves in the rest of the world, how much are people voting for reskilling and upskilling just because we are bombarded with the message about it all the time? So I, I, I'm not, I, I, I'd be wary of saying that Brazil is behind the trend on this. It may simply be that people aren't talking about it so much in Brazil. I, mm -hmm. And I don't know. I, don't, I haven't looked through uh, any press in Brazil to work it out. I, I, is it something that's... That people are talking about? Do they talk about, in particular, future skills for the organization? Is that a hot topic? Yeah, future skills, power skills instead of, of soft yeah. skills is, is something uh, that we've been talking about. But I think there's a lot of reskilling, upskilling, lifelong learning, hopefully. Life wide, the, the life -wide learning. Life wide yeah. learning, also, yeah. But lifelong learning is the name of the book, so yeah, I appreciate it. It's all over the place, also. We're skilling, upskilling, it is. But the thing is that when I see about when, when I see the people talking about reskilling, upskilling, the, specifically business people, uh, guys that are not from HR, usually they are talking about helping the people to achieve their their most difficult uh, transformation efforts. And so I, I just was thinking that. Maybe we're trying to do the same old L and D, like let's see the competencies gap, and let's see that. So we are not going to the businesses and 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 talk to them about listen what's going on, and 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 I don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't... I, I I think I think that I had this word I've invented called the the uh, ambient wordscape, which is trying to give the idea that there's words all around us that people choose from. And I think if, if, if people in Brazil aren't hearing reskilling and upskilling as much as they are elsewhere, then that's a big contributing factor. Um, yeah. Let's have a quick look at the other ones. Um, collaborative social learning. Yes, we've said Brazil is way at the top there. We know USA is way at the bottom there. So that's a huge, that's a, really graphically illustrates the difference between them. Yeah, it's very good. Um, Again, Spain and Brazil, other end. World, the world is in the middle, but Spain and Brazil are at other ends of the scale here about personalization. I don't know why the Brazilians are so keen on. Uh, it may be a, it may be a sampling issue. Maybe I've got. Uh, it, it may be that in Spain I've got a lot of people who are um, being contacted by a, a software company. I don't know. Coaching and mentoring here. Bizarrely, Brazil and Spain are almost the same, but well behind or not agreeing with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the other four in the middle are, are kind of the same. Then we get to learning experience platforms. And again, this illustrates just how 
keen Brazil is on learning experience platforms in comparison with everybody else. It's amazing. Yeah. Mar- Mathio says, or Marcio says, it's a surprise Brazil in a high level in the scale we tend to believe we aren't doing enough. You know what? It's really weird, but I, obviously I have these conversations with people all over the world all the time about what's going on. And unless you come from the United States, everybody else's reaction is we're not doing enough. We're behind. <laughs> we're slow. And the Americans don't even think about it, but everyone else seems to think we're slow. Everyone just relax, please. Everyone's doing a great job and that you've got enough work to do. Uh, I, don't, I don't really think anyone's really, really very behind on things. Um, and that's why with the reskilling upskilling thing, Conrad, I'm a bit sort of, I'm not convinced that, that it's, it's a matter of people not understanding the implication. I think it's more a matter of, the, of them just not being bombarded with the words enough. So to, to wrap up those slides, um, my summary is Brazil is different from the rest. Uh, we've <laughs> seen they're different from world USA, Spain. Again, and this is the same as it was last year. Last year, it was also the highest scores for those three things and the lowest score for mobile delivery. Now, one question which I've got is, um, you know, it looks like Brazil supported this really modern approach to learning, collaboration, learning experience platforms, curation. But in comparison with the rest of the world, low on personalization, low on coaching and mentoring, which you'd think would also be part of that. So when it comes to the 70, 20, 10, particularly the coaching and mentoring part, you'd expect that yeah. to be part of it. And also, yes, Brazil is really high on learning analytics, but it's low on showing value. Maybe that's a language thing. It's low on consulting with the business in comparison with the rest of the world. So Conrado, you talk to people all the time. You're, you've got clients out there. How concerned are they to show value of what they're doing to the business? I will start answering on the first part. I mean, how worried they are about understanding the business need before starting a learning program. And I think, I, I think that that's where the problem starts. Yeah. Because usually we, I, I just had a client that they called me, what do you think that we are just organizing a, a, a learn pathway here? And uh, I'd like to know your view on the, the trends for skills of the future for leadership. I thought, Why are you asking me? <laughs> Go ask them. <laughs> Go talk to them. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's what so, they should be doing. It's yeah. So the first part, I think that they, we're still... Uh, uh, looking to ourselves, to our department. And on the other hand, I, I, I see people worry about, about showing our... I really don't believe at this time of my life, I think I can say that, uh, after Phillips and, and Kirkpatrick, uh, we saw the math, but we represent the math. But I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not solid enough for you to say that it's, it's something that it's... It's usual thing. I, I prefer learning analytics and, and and return on impact. And I mean to see. So I, I my, when I see people just finishing, I do not, when I see people talking about uh, ROI, I see them talking to preserve themselves. Yeah, yeah. To make sure yeah. that the company understands that money was well spent. So basically, no, I don't see people. Uh, talking about showing value i mean it's that's not unique to brazil by the way i mean i think what you're describing is something that's really common worldwide and i think there's a real issue with people not being interested in talking to the business Uh, nigel payne who you know does a great job with this he says go out and do the field work and i like that phrase It, it, it it suggests the idea that you should go out work with the business, find out what the business is doing and find out what's really going on rather than approaching it theoretically. By the way, I'm quite happy to say that the Jack Phillips approach does work, but it, but it works in particular circumstances and it yeah. takes quite a lot of work to do. But for everything that learning and development does, it should be in conversation with the business about why it's doing it. If it's not doing, if it's not having those conversations, there is something wrong. Again, this is not just Brazil. This is everywhere. 
Um, yes. I, I, now, look, how much time do we have? At the beginning, we were quite loose about this, Conrado. Um, yeah. What, what do you want to do? Well, we, we, can, we can have we have some comments. We can comment the comments here. Yeah. And then call it a night. Okay. I just want to say one thing, right? But, but let's let's talk about value and why it's important. Not value, yeah. but talking to the business. Um, you will be familiar, I'm sure, with uh, this. Uh, in December, uh, ByteDance, which owns TikTok, laid off. They 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 got rid of the whole team in the training department why because <laughs> i laugh every time i see this but it's a sort of hollow laugh some company staff were unaware of what the talent development team does and many events such as online talks of mediocre quality did not make effective use of our employees time now this is just a this is a death warrant for l and d if, if you're using people's time so badly, then you don't deserve to be working there. Now, I'm pleased to say two things. Firstly, all those people got work elsewhere in bike dance. So that's good. Secondly, they are looking for a new head of learning and development globally from, I think it's in Dublin, right? So they recognize also that it's important. The problem is this team wasn't doing it. And so, you know, when we say go out and talk to your people, that's why we need to go out and talk to the people, right? Let me go and go to a wrap-up uh, title slide. There we are. That's me. I'm, I always say, please keep in contact and let's let's stay in touch. We've got some comments here. Uh, I've got. I'm a bit dry. Do you want to read some of the comments, Conrado, and and give some yeah. give some uh, thought about that? Yeah. The first is uh, the company uh, that are investing in LXP platform, but there's a great effort to engage employees to get used to self-learning, self-directed yeah. learning. Is there is this something that's happening in other parts of the world? This lifelong learning and self-directed learning uh, approach, also. I tell you what. I, one of the questions which I ask on the survey is, "What's your challenge this year?" Right, um, uh -huh. and the, the 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 big challenge everyone's got is engagement. They're finding it really difficult to get people engaged, uh, and I think that there's been a long history of trying to get people to be self-generating, uh, so, sorry, self-starting learners, autodidacts, people who are, who are keen to do it. But honestly, what I'm hearing is from, from these comments that people are giving is that people are exhausted. Employees are exhausted. They're stuck in front of their computers. They are really not interested in learning generally because they're just so tired but particularly in the online offerings which have been given to them so i think there's a lot of work to be done to get people to engage and, and uh, i excuse me if i'm pronouncing your name incorrectly natane but it's it is curious that companies are investing in xp platforms but a great effort to engage employees to get used to self-driven learning um and i think i think that's true it, the two can work together of course but I think I think the reason why they want people to learn for themselves is that they find it very difficult to engage them any other way. There's still a great demand for face-to-face follow-up. Is that your experience, yeah. Conrado? Yeah, I think that this in Brazil, this is a bit something like the social learning part. But the thing is that if you if you have people talking about the training three, four weeks after the training, this is something that I really believe that happens. It's easy. It's not expensive. Yep. And people like. And somehow you have a social pressure for you to try to apply what you have learned. Yeah. Um, so I think I think it's something that it, it, it could be interesting. And I'm not sure if there's a, there, there's a, this this follow up should be face to ba face or could be in a Zoom meeting something like. That. Like that. Let me. We have a final question from Marcel, but because that, we be, before that, I'm tired. Um, we, you know, we, we know that Novi is a learning, learning culture studio, and yeah. we truly believe that, uh, as Nigel and yourself, and that learning culture sh should be something important. And we have some of those marvelous cases. We have Novartis. We have Citibank. We have. Uh, Sky, how do you see learning culture? Many people that are 
uh, companies that have structured learning culture initiatives and even the professionals that are ready to develop learning culture initiatives all, all over the world. Is, is this something that you believe this is necessary and is it happening? Well, I believe it's happening that people are trying to do it. I don't know if they're being successful in doing it. Uh, my view on learning culture is, and I, I would always um, say that Nigel is probably the guy to go and talk to about this, but I would say that learning culture exists, right? Whether you like it or not, your company has a learning culture of some sort. Who's in charge of it? Well, for me, learning culture is not separate from any other part of the culture. Learning is so embedded in what people are and how they work, and it's so embedded in the organization, it's so reflected in what we do, that learning culture is part of the general culture of the organization. It's, it's madness to assume that we can single-handedly change it. doesn't mean we can't do things to change it. We can. But it's not like rolling out a course. If you want to change or set up a good learning uh, culture, it means working right at the top, which the people at the top of the organization tend to dictate culture, but it also means finding a place where you can really make it flourish to be an example to everybody else. You don't try and do a company-wide learning culture rollout. It will die. But get people at the top enthusiastic about it and find one corner of the company where you can make it work and where people are already doing a lot of the stuff, and then you'll be on the way. It involves an awful lot of stuff that superficially have nothing to do with learning, like psychological safety, like um, people being able to take time to think about things, which might not have much to do with learning superficially, but actually is crucial to it. So that's a rather long answer, Conrado, but does that, I don't know, do you agree with me? Do you, do you yeah, think Yeah, I agree nonsense? completely. Right. I, 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 we, ha, we have a, a motto here that oh, learning always happens when HR is not looking. Always. <laughs> because it's not on, it's not on the... Uh, and it's a good thing. It's a yeah. good thing. But I mean, we can do something that create this, design this, this ambient. Final one. Before, actually, let's go to Mars. So then I have a, yeah. Well, we've got one. some good comments. I'm going to give a shout out to... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Gisela, Gisela. So in my view... Wanting learning KPIs goes against the learning culture itself. Business results should speak for themselves. If I understand you correctly, I agree. I think that we should be we shouldn't be focusing on on the activity measures of learning. We should be working exactly with the business. What's the problem? How are people behaving? How should they behave? What should they know? How what against what they know currently? Right. Let's see if we can fill that, and let's see if not with some extra added KPI, let's see through the business results, did we do the job? If we did, great. If we didn't, well, let's go back and revise it. So um, I, I in, agree enthusiastically with uh, with what you're saying. Um, sorry, Conrado, you choose. Yeah, yeah, and I have Marcio also. It's, do you believe, this is for you, do you believe that employees are ready to do, always looking for the self-learning, if they're ready to have a continuous learning approach by themselves? Well, I think Flora actually answered that question on the point ahead, a point just above that, where she says, um, I would say relevance is key to getting people engaged. 100%. You know, I will read a lot, I'll learn a lot from a, a document that doesn't look good, but helps me get done what I need to get done. And I'll really work hard to understand it because I need to get the information relevance to the issues that people face is key. So I think, yes, uh, Marcio, I think, yeah, the employees are ready to do self-learning when it's solving a problem that they've got. That problem could be immediate, short-term, or it could be a longer-term one. I want to I want to know how to get around this problem I'm going to have in three months' time, a year's time. But the key is always relevance. Motivation, two, talk, two sorts of motivation are key to learning. One is the motivation to keep learning when you're in the middle of doing something and it's not going well. But the other one, which is arguably more important, is the motivation to start. If people aren't motivated to start, usually because this is something which is going to help them, nothing else will happen. So we can make things look as pretty as we like, not going to make a difference. For me, that's why the manager's engagement is so important. If the managers are involved, and they help people understand how this thing is going to help the individual go on to better work, that's crucial for developing people. And you know that we have this experience with Learning Sprint 
which is the six, six, one hour and a half meeting where people go there to have a self-directed learning experience. We believe that if you are teaching someone how to learn, you're already starting the bad way because right. you don't. You, so, and, and in all the groups, and we, we, we did here with large companies, with all the groups at the end of 12 weeks, because of six, six meetings every other week, 80% of the participants said, now I got, because I have this, the company helps me to find two, three hours per week so that I can stop learning. And I have a little bit more specific tools and I have the habit because we were doing this for three months. Right. So it's, and it's so easy somehow. My final question for you regarding upskilling and reskilling of the l and professional itself, himself, mm. herself. Uh, do you think that we need to upskill ourselves? I mean, do you, th do, you, do you think that it's important for this group to start acquiring new knowledges uh, on their on their professional lives? How do you see this happening? And how do you see the importance of that? Well, yeah, obviously, I think it's tremendously important. I I am I'm gonna just suggest something though about where we should develop ourselves professionally that we'll we'll have certain things we do maybe it's learning designer maybe it's something else maybe it's facilitation and you can develop your skills in that area there'll be some people and it may not be everybody but there'll be some people who need to take a leading role in learning and development and for those people they need to develop skills which are not to do with learning The problem is that to be influential at the higher levels in the organization, it's not enough to be really good at being learning development professionals. Yes, you have to do it. You have to do great onboarding. You have to do great training. You have to run great programs, do uh, feedback. You have to build systems, make sure they're embedded and so on. But that's the job. The top of the organization, if you want to influence them, those people are not so interested in that. What they are interested in doing is knowing how that's going to work for the business. And that means that on top of that work, as well as that work, you have to get knowledge, skills, and attitude to help you be influential. The knowledge is knowing about the business, knowing about how the business operates. The skills are performance consulting, listening, being able to ask probing questions, being able to be happy with answers and then go one step further and the mindset the attitude side is always be thinking about the business and be happy and a lot of people in learning development aren't be happy to deal with ambiguity because so much of what happens in our lives we can't pin down in learning development we think we can control it when we're creating a course but if we want to be influential there's an awful lot of ambiguity there and we have to be comfortable with that while we're having conversations with people at the top. So it might not be what you're expecting, Conrado. Obviously, I agree we need to develop ourselves, but I think that some people, if you want to take a leading role, need to be prepared to develop yourself in things that don't appear to have much to do with learning development itself. I completely agree. And even I said, even the, even the guys that would like to have a more technical approach, there's some interesting like anthropology or even a little bit of neuroscience, a little bit of sure. of uh, science, of behavioral science. There are also some other topics, right? Don, thank you a lot. We Actually, we are going to see each other in almost three weeks, a little bit three more. Three weeks, three, three and a half yeah. weeks, yeah. yeah. Three and a half weeks. So we are going to, we are going to participate. Actually, we are going to bring a group of, Brazilian professionals to the learning technology. I'd like just to explain a little bit what it is and why they, if they can, they they they, they should be coming to understand. Uh, I look, I'll be delighted to to see guests from all over the world at Learning Technologies, including the, our colleagues from Brazil. Uh, it's a conference and an exhibition of two days in London. Uh, we are bringing together some top speakers. We've got. Uh, well, I won't, I won't listen in the conference. We've got great speakers at the conference. And the aim is to do two things, to provide great content. But also, I always say my job is to create spaces 
for useful conversations. So we provide stimulating stuff and then we get people together to have useful conversations so that they can build themselves and build their networks to be better learning and development professionals afterwards. Very good. No, no, th thank you a lot. It's always so interesting to hear you and always a pleasure to always have this pleasure. chat. Always a pleasure. Thank you a lot. Very great to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks' time. Thank you. Bye-bye.